Hello and welcome to another episode of Sci-Fi Night Tipsy Talk. By now you guys probably know the deal, it's me going off kinda tipsy, unscripted, unfiltered, and just kind of shooting the shit about random topics. So as most of you also already know, we are reviewing the uh, episodes of Season 11 of The X-Files. And let's just get right into it with Episode 3 plus 1. Uh, so this was uh, written by Chris Carter, series creator, who I've given a lot of shit uh, for both season 11 and season 10. I thought he did the worst episodes of season 10 and so far the worst episode of uh, season 11, but you know we're only three episodes in, so that might change. This was directed by Kevin Hooks, who I don't really know much about other than that. He directed like one episode of a Punisher Netflix series and like... I don't know, like, between between 10 and 20 episodes of Prison Break. Uh, for those of you who remember last time, I was kind of irritated that they kept switching out the, the title cards for, um, for the episodes. That, you know, instead of The Truth Is Out, they changed it. Here, they kind of changed it, but kind of didn't. Because they had The Truth Is Out there times two. Because this is an episode about doppelgangers. And while I'm kind of split on it, because while I do like the fact that... It fits perfectly. I mean, having the, the iconic The Truth Is Out There text double up in an episode about doppelgangers makes sense. At the same time, they really are overdoing it. Like, it, it, it loses all meaning, uh, you know, uh, if you just change, the, if you just change the, the title text. So in this episode, it starts off with some guy at a punk rock show. He sees his double, and then he chases after him. He disappears, gets into a car. Double turns up next to him, and... Uh, sort of steers the wheel right into a tree. Mulder and Scully investigate, and uh, this episode was really like sweet <laughs> between, like, when it came to Mulder and Scully, very dynamic. Mulder's like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I know you will. And um, I don't know, this was like the most relationshipy episode of all season 11, which has already been pretty relationshipy. So basically they're investigating a strange case in a small town where people are seeing their doppelgangers and then ending up dead, most of it ruled to suicide. Now this guy in the beginning ends up surviving and, you know, stands, swears by his life that there was some weird guy who looked just like him who forced him to swear it's for a swerve into a tree. And uh, Scully calls it suicidal mass hysteria, which is uh, a pretty interesting concept to be honest. It was done terribly in M. Night Shyamalan's The Happening, which is actually a really funny movie. If you watch it as a comedy, if you watch it as a serious horror film, you're gonna get really disappointed. Uh, but uh, what I liked here as well was that they brought back classic actress Karen Carnival, who uh, played a really iconic character. She played the mother in the, of the incest uh, redneck family in the episode Home, which is my second favorite episode ever, and she played a fortune teller in my favorite episode ever, Clyde Bruckman's Final Repose from season 3. And she was pretty damn great in this, uh, a little over the top, to be honest, there were some some parts of her performance that I felt were a bit too much, but overall she played three different characters, and uh, I, I, I really enjoyed her performance, it was cool seeing her back, she's become a bit of an X-Files, uh, not legend, but uh, sort of a, a recurring X-Files actor, which I like. Uh, so uh, Mulder and Scully end up investigating this mental institution where Karen Carnival plays one of the patients who claims that she sees her evil twin uh, and that she's playing this game of hangman with her brother uh, who's on the outside. And I, uh, I really liked the image of like a mental institution with one of the patient walls just blotted up with hangman pictures. I actually thought that was a pretty cool image. I wish they kind of would have held on it a little bit longer, but um, it was a cool image either way. So they don't really get a whole lot out of her. Uh, Scully is a little bit pessimistic, Mulder is a little bit also pessimistic, like Mulder is kind of surprisingly un -pes surprisingly pessimistic, like when, uh, actually we'll get to that later on, but at the, then Mulder and Scully go to a hotel suite, they go to a hotel and the person working there offers a suite, Mulder's like, that's fine, <laughs> and that's pretty cool. Uh, then later on, the, the kid from the beginning of the punk rock show, he ends up dead. Uh, he finds his uh, his double in his prison cell because he's been caught for like a uh, drinking while driving offense or something like that. And uh, he ended, they find him hanged. And at that point, like, Mulder was a little bit surprisingly pessimistic. Like, dude, you've seen fucking aliens, ghosts, whatever, but I actually kind of liked that he's like, okay, I've seen all this stuff, but 
let's not get carried away. Scully has a point a lot of the times, but we can't just jump into every solution. So it kind of worked like that for me. Uh, but then we cut to the, the second character played by Karen Carnival, who at first I thought was just really over the top. But honestly, she did a great job because she actually plays a man. She plays the twin brother of uh, the woman in the mental institution. And I didn't actually even notice it was her in the beginning. It took me a little while where I started noticing the voice and the, sort of recognizing the face. Uh, in terms of performance, she really did stick out. Like, I actually thought she was a man in the beginning, which is obviously good acting points. But I did think of the character was too over the top. I mean, who would be that aggressive with an FBI agent showing up at your door? Eh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, but then uh, Scully goes to the mental institution again and basically says, like, I want the killing to stop. Like, she's pretty much accepted that, okay, there is some kind of super supernatural stuff going on. We just gotta figure out what. And I like that, because Scully has become more and more the believer throughout the seasons. I mean, she starts off the, you know, the skeptic in the beginning, and then towards, like, season 8 and 9, she's basically, like coming up with crazy theories but trying to do it in a scientific way so I like that she was sort of still doing that here and we get a triple role for Karen Carnival because she plays a, the mental patient the mental patient's brother and the mental patient's like evil twin or evil persona who is pretty creepy uh, Karen Carnival knows how to play villains the mother and home and then this role uh, solid stuff solid stuff I gotta say uh, I, lo I love the line uh, that she says to uh, Scully, nothing hurts like the truth. Because in, in some ways it really it really is true. I mean, the whole slogan for the series has been the truth is out there and Mulder's search for the truth. But at the same time, his search for the truth has resulted in like his father's death, the death of uh, Scully's uh, sister, the death of Deep Throat, the death of Mr. X, or, uh, you know, the informants from seasons uh, one and seasons two through, I think it was three or four. And uh, so I, I actually really like that line. Like, despite me kind of shitting on Chris Carter for season, 11, season 10, I did think the writing was better for this episode. Uh, and it's kind of weird because I always thought that Chris Carter was better at the mythology episodes and worse at the standalones. But it seems like that's kind of changing. Uh, so yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, I like that line anyway. Either way, then uh, back at the hotel, Mulder's like, uh, when we're talking about possibilities, he's like, I wouldn't rule out ghosts, and I'm like, really, Mulder? Had this been like any other case, I would have been like, okay, I get that, but there was a pretty clear case of like psychic manifestation or like uh, out of body experiences or something that like you're placing in these people's heads to make them see their double and I guess harm themselves like why would you I would probably rule out ghosts here <laughs> like probably or I guess you could technically I guess you could say perhaps a mental patient is conjuring up spirits that look like their victims but that is not the first place I would go <laughs> uh and I like that, oh yeah, Scully, she gets kind of dissed by the evil twin. Uh, she says, uh, or the evil twin says, oh, she's old and dried up and whatever. And Mulder's like comforting her like, oh, Scully, Scully you still got it going on. You still got some scoot in your boot. And he's really like horny this episode. Like he's trying to get some at every like, every line. He's kind of like with a smirk and a, and a wink trying to get in her pants. I was fine with that because Mulder's always been like, you know, the porn guy and sort of in that direction and now with their relationship kind of more open to each other yeah I dug, I dug it so a lot of what, what like this episode boiled down to was a concept of evil twins and like the concept of evil that like all the all the bad parts of ourselves that we sort of bury and and hide from everyone that that, that, that side of us can manifest itself uh, that was actually a pretty interesting concept for me like I like that idea uh, that said, I mean, Chris Carter kind of has an obsession with double gangers and doubles. He did the season 7 episode Fight Club, which is unfortunately one of the worst episodes ever. But in that episode, there's like a Mulder and Scully double ganger FBI team, and Kathy Griffith pays, plays a set of twins. And uh, then we've got like with agents uh, Einstein and Miller, who are kind of doppelgangers of Mulder and Scully. So Chris Carter definitely has a hard-on for doubles. Uh, I don't know, Freud, feel free to roll over in your grave and uh, make an analysis of that. 
but uh then we've got the um, oh yeah the lawyer of a kid in the beginning he starts seeing his double as well the the mental patient starts playing with his name uh, basically like they play a game of hangman and if the ever twin doesn't guess a name that person dies by way of her double or that's how i interpreted it anyway so he starts freaking out after seeing his double twice and he's like runs out to his driver with a bunch of guns and i'm like who would do that like someone's probably gonna call the cops you're gonna think you're gonna like shoot up your workplace or something it was weird uh but then he got killed in a pretty pretty cool way he got his head sliced off and uh oh yeah and we got to see scully and Mulder spooning which i mean i was squealing like squealing like a pig there because let's face it i am a shipper i'm a relationship i want to see them together um I don't think it hurts for dynamic as much because like when has sex and romance ever made a relationship easier I mean, let's face it it's usually easier with friends than it is with a romantic partner so uh, I'm all for them hooking up I like it it, it warms my heart uh, but then basically we kind of figure out what's going on so Scully heads off to uh, to a mental institution whereas Mulder heads off to the prison guard because we figure out that like okay there's some there's this game that we're doing that's killing people and uh, Mulder ends up running into his double and having a fight with his double. Um, the fight itself wasn't all that great, but I just like the image of him fighting himself and like you, you as a viewer losing track of which Mulder is the good Mulder and which one is the evil twin. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, one thing that I liked as well was that like uh, at the security guard's house, the uh, Mulder eventually sees a hangman thing where it says mom and dad where you realize that they killed their parents with his psychic connection and that was like kind of a dark turn that I actually really liked I, I, I liked a lot of the dark elements of this episode um, we didn't get a whole lot of that in season 10 we're getting that more in season 11 so far anyway which I like I like uh, my, my favorite episode or my favorite season of X-Files is season 4 which is like the dark season I also really like season 8 which is really dark and gory and uh, yeah, I liked it. Then we got a super cute ending as well with Mulder and Scully. And I mean, all of you have seen it. I mean, you know what I mean. Was it cheesy? Yeah, but whatever. I'm rolling with it. And uh, oh yeah, and I really like the uh, the the new outro music at the end. Um, I dig that. But overall, I, I enjoyed this episode. It was my favorite episode so far. I liked the dark turn. I liked the concept of like an evil twin and of us sort of suppressing our own evil and that manifesting itself. I think that's a pretty cool concept. And overall, yeah, enjoyable. I think season 11 will continue to pick up. Next episode is uh, written by... Uh, uh, Oh my god, I'm forgetting his name. He's written my favorite episode of X-Files ever. Darren Morgan, there we go. Darren Morgan has written the next episode, The Lost Art of Forehead Sweat, which is a super weird title, but whatever. He always delivers, so I'm interested. And uh, it's a comedy episode. I was kind of hoping they would continue with something dark the next episode as well, but I do, as what I understand, episode 5 will be dark again. So whatever, we'll take a little comedic dip next week, and then we'll return to some dark, bloody stuff a week after that. And I'm cool with that. But uh, so yeah, those are my thoughts on uh, X-Files Season 11 Episode 3 Plus 1. Overall, enjoyed it. It was flawed. Like, it still has some of that new sort of like, everything looks a little bit too clean and well lit. I miss some of the sort of dark and misty and moody stuff from the earlier seasons. And even from Season 8, which was later on. Season 9 got kind of bright, a bit too bright for my taste. And speaking of Season 9, this episode actually reminded me of a Season 9 episode, Demonicus. Which was about a mental patient playing this game that uh, resulted in people getting killed. So it was borderline too close to that, but the sort of doppelganger split personality thing kind of made up for it for me. But um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on the episode. Overall liked it, overall my favorite episode so far. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below, and uh, I will be releasing the next sci Out Light episode this weekend. I've been just too busy, I actually got a job uh, editing a commercial video uh, so I've been pretty busy with that, but I'm, I'm making some decent money off of it, so I'm good with it. And uh, I appreciate all you guys holding out for some non-X-Files tipsy talk content. But like I said, this weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, I will be releasing it. So, uh, yeah, that about does it for this episode of sci Tipsy Talk, and I'll catch you guys next time.